All right, we're back in another Sound the Battle Cry, and today we're going to be talking about another point in the pre-trip series. This point is about the parable of the tares and the wheat. This parable goes along with the event of one when one is taken, when one is taken and the other left. We see here in this parable that the wicked are taken first, killed and thrown in hell. The righteous are not raptured out. Okay, so this is one of those ones that um, it's just pretty clear. It's plain what it says. And um, it's just another evidence that the preacher rapture is a myth. And um, if you properly interpret this parable according to how Jesus interprets it, then you will come to the right conclusion. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's hear the parable. Then we'll give get to the explanation that Jesus gives as to what the parable actually means because his disciples ask what it means. All right, so go over to Matthew 13. Matthew 13 is filled with a bunch of parables, and this is one of them, uh, starting in verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now, let me stop you there for a second. Because this phrase here that is used is the kingdom of heaven. And I will be doing a teaching um, about the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of heaven, because that is a teaching that is um, that is um, taught by dispensationalists, and they say there is a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Now, they have some disagreements among themselves, but the way that I was taught, uh, because I went to a church for almost a year that was pre-trip, they were dispensationalists, and I listened. I caused no division in that church. The pastor even asked me not to talk about the rapture because I told him I wasn't pre-trip. Uh, privately, and he said, that's fine, as long as you don't try to cause division and, and start to secretly convert people to it. I said, that's fine. I won't talk about it. I won't upset the apple cart. And then he did a series on the preacher of rapture, which I sat through for a while, week after week. I kept my mouth shut, but I definitely took a lot of notes. And I also heard lots of dispensational teaching. And I've heard it from other people. I've heard it from Ruckmanites. And what they told me was that the kingdom of heaven only refers to the earthly millennial kingdom. And the kingdom of God is talking about, you know, this invisible um, kingdom that we enter when we're born again. And there's a difference. And the reason they say this is because the kingdom of heaven phrase is used in the book of Matthew. And they say that the book of Matthew is only written to Jews. And therefore, he used the phrase the kingdom of heaven to appeal to the Jews because they didn't say the word God. So he would be better for him to use the phrase the kingdom of heaven. And that is what they teach. But I will show that um, this whole teaching that the kingdom of heaven ref only refers to the earthly millennial reign is false. And I have a whole other teaching already done on that, which I will release. Because guess what? Dispensationalism is intrinsically tied together with this whole pre-trib teaching, and we'll be going through all of it. And that's the way it is. And that's the bottom line. All right, I haven't said that in a while. I had to say it. All right. Back to the parable, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? Thy field from whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, the reason I said first like that is because I want you to pay attention to the order of which items are gathered first, okay? The tares are gathered first. And the reason I emphasize that is because now when we go to the explanation, we find out what the tares represent. 
And that's important that it says they were gathered first. Now let's go to the explanation. So if you are in Matthew chapter 13 and you skip down to verse 36, we get the explanation because his disciples asked him um, what it, the parable meant. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. In, in the end of this world, the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the son of the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear, let him hear. All right. So now we have the explanation of the parable revealed. Jesus himself tells us what exactly everything represents. And so if we go back, let's go through this. He says that the good seed, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Okay. So we have Jesus and he's sowing the good seed. We have the good seed of the gospel, right? Another, we have the parable of the sower. And the word of God is compared to seed, right? It's some fell by the wayside, some landed on stony ground, some landed among thorns, and some landed on good ground, which produced fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. So more than one time, the uh, word of God is com and the gospel is compared to seed. Um, um, being born again by the word of God, um, whatever, I forget the scripture, sorry. It's talking about incorruptible seed. You know what I'm talking about. All right. So he says, uh, the seed, the key that soweth good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. Okay. So he's sowing. Jesus sows the, the gospel, the word of God into the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. Okay. So, you know, the seed can represent the word of God and the gospel, but in here, it also represents the children of the, the kingdom. So they're the good seed. And uh, so, I, you know, I guess it's a little bit different in this parable. The good seed is, uh, but it's still, the seed is still representative of the gospel, which produces saved people. Okay. So the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. All right. So there's that distinction there, but we clearly see the tares are the children of the wicked one. What does that mean? That means that the tares are the lost people, okay? Children of the wicked one, children of the devil. Bible says, he that committeth sin is of the devil. In this, um, what does it say? <laughs> Man, I'm doing bad with going to the scriptures right now. In this, it is manifest that the, uh, the children of God and the, and the children of the devil he that doeth not righteousness and loveth not his brother is not of God, right? So there's children of the devil. Jesus called the Pharisees uh, children of your father, the devil, right? And so you're of your father and of his lust you will do. So children of the wicked one are lost people. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. And then the harvest is the end of the world. So this is where it all gets sifted out, right? This is where it gets separated and we find the difference between the tares and the wheat and the reapers are the angels. Now, so now we have everything defined. It talks about what happens. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Okay? So it says right here, the tares are gathered, burned in the fire. We learn that in the, uh, in the, in the telling of the parable. Right, Because in verse 30 of Matthew 13, it says, Gather ye together first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them. And he says here, As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. 
The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them that do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. Okay? So the tares that are gathered and burned in the fire is representative of lost people being taken and cast into a furnace of fire, which is hell. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Right? You've heard that in the description of hell. Over and over and over again, there shall be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. The hell is called a furnace of fire, everlasting fire. It's called, it's it's said to have, um, he'll cast you into hell fire. And so they're being cast into hell, right? And the whole point here is that the tares are gathered first, okay? So... You know, there's not a whole lot of detail here, but it's just a simple point that needs to be made. In the parable of the tares and the wheat, the it says right here in Matthew 13, 30, gather together first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And in the explanation, he says, they're gathered and thrown in the, the tares are thrown in the furnace of fire. And then after that, then shall the righteous shine forth as the son of the kingdom of their father. And that's the order of events. It does not say gather together the righteous or the wheat and then the wicked will be judged or the tares will be burned after that. It doesn't say that. It says gather the tares first, the lost people, okay? Now, one other comment about that because uh, this scripture is also used... um, to push another false doctrine because he says in the parable he says uh in verse 28 he said unto them an enemy hath done this the servant said unto him wilt thou thou that we go wilt thou then that we go and gather them up but he said nay lest while ye gather up the tares ye root up also the wheat with them okay so you have to understand what this means because this is taken out of context I uh, uh, people take this out of context to say that you can't rebuke sin, fa- call out false prophets, false doctrine, and heresy, and they say, oh, or or do church discipline, kicking someone out of church because that would be uprooting the tares, and you just got to let him grow. Well, I'm sorry, but this has nothing to do with that. There is nothing to indicate that this has anything to do with rebuking someone, church discipline, anything like that. It's a ridiculous interpretation that you can't find any any proof to, to prove that. So what is interesting about this is what does it mean when he says, you want us to go and gather them up? And he says, no, don't gather them up. Just wait until the, the harvest, right? And then we'll gather them up. So... If we see what Jesus said, he said, okay, wait till the harvest and we'll gather them up. Well, then we find out what the harvest is. The harvest is the end of the world, okay? So what happens in the harvest in the end of the world? Well, what happens is the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. They're thrown into hell, right? They're cast up, they're killed, they're thrown into hell. So he uses the same word, by the way, the tares are gathered, Now, does that mean that they were rebuked? They were disciplined out of church? No, they were taken. They were killed. They were thrown in hell. You know what he's saying to, uh, to the, to the guy, the, the servants of the householder came, um, the servant said to him, wilt thou that we go and gather them up? You know what they're saying? You want us to uproot them? You want us to kill them? Get rid of them? What do you think you do with the tear? You think you you talk to it? You think you do church discipline to it? No, they're talking about getting rid of it and throwing it in the fire. And he said, no, 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 not yet. Wait till the harvest. What that means is killing them. And you know what that means? It means no physical violence, persecution, and killing of people that you think are lost, you think are heretics, and that is exactly what the Catholic Church has done all throughout history. They have said, hey, these are tares, let's gather them up, get rid of them. Let's put them on the the rack, let's torture them, let's burn them at the stake, let's get rid of them. And they were literally burning people, 
at the stake. And so that's what it's talking about. It has nothing to do with rebuking, saying he wants to get rid of him. Because, you know, if you think about it in, in a context of how it's it's viewed here is from God's perspective, we're talking about God's creation, his kingdom. He's, you know, it says Jesus is the one sowing the good seal, the uh, good seed. Imagine you go sow all this good seed and there's a bunch of weeds there that pop up. You're like, oh, I want to get rid of these, toss these out. That's how the weeds, uh, are, the lost people are viewed by God in this parable as just getting in the way their weeds, they're choking out everything good. And why does he wait until the harvest? Because God is long suffering. He waits until the end as long as possible to give everyone an opportunity to repent. And then when that's it, he said, okay, you, that's it. Now you're going to hell. You're dead. You're going to hell. And that's it. Because God didn't create his creation and his earth to be inhabited by evil people and the devil's children. And so they had asked a legitimate question by saying, you want us to go gather them up? Remember what the disciples said? You want us to rain fire down from heaven on them? He said, no, 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 no. You don't know what spirit you are of. The son of man came not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And that's the point. Right now, we're, there is no physical persecution get, getting rid of them, of lost people and persecuting them physically. We're supposed to preach the gospel, love our enemies even. But then when the time's up, God's all done with lost people. There will come a day when mercy is cut off and he's like, you're out of here. And he throws them in hell. And uh, go back and listen to my teachings on why we deserve hell. Hell is eternal conscious torment and fire. And then go back and also listen to a teaching you really need to listen to is how can God be just and the justifier, the intersection of God's justice and mercy. Because then you really see... Um. Oh, actually, no. Uh, I mean, that is a good one you need to listen to. Go back and, and watch my video on um, does God love everyone? Okay? Does God love everyone? Because one of the points I make in there and I show from Scripture is God doesn't love people that he throws in hell for all of eternity. That's not an act of love. Okay? Now, the, the if you love can be found in Jesus Christ, God showed his love toward the world by sending Jesus Christ to die for our sins, to die for the sins of the whole world. And if you want access to that love and want to experience the love of, of having God as your father, then you need to repent, put your faith in Jesus Christ, you'll be born again. Outside of that, you don't experience God's love. We're not all God's children. And that's why God says, hey, they're given this time to space to repent. But after that, they're out of here. They're taking up space on my creation. They're going in hell. And that's what we're talking about here with the tears. So kind of a side note, but not really. It still applies. All right. Well, that was it for the uh, tears in the wheat. Hope you enjoyed that. God bless you. Have a good day.